Hello and welcome to Full Swipe Timeline Hangout number 50. The main subject of this, this hangout is madness and murder. I was going to do a different one but um, I've been overtaken by events. I've got another one planned um, <coughs> later in the month or early next month. But I've been having problems with my software. I was going to go live I did a test on YouTube and uh, the same problem I had before I tried Facebook as well and uh, well, I won't say what happened there but <coughs> my current setup I, um, I'm using Windows 7 like every library in Britain uh, I can't afford to upgrade at the moment I have a feeling I need a new machine but uh, if and when I do get one, I still want to be using Windows 7, so I'm, I'm, I, uh, this Windows 10 is a horrible program. I'm not sure exactly what's going to be happening, uh, except that um, these hangouts, as far as I continue them, are going to be pre-recorded, but you can still send me questions if other people do that. Um, <coughs> I've been very much under the weather. Um, um, I had, a, had my COVID injection last week, first one, <coughs> about 10 minutes ago. Uh, talking of not so good, I heard from Sean Coleman, my correspondent from the Irish Republic. I was a bit worried about him because uh, he, he said he'd been, <coughs> he said he was ill and uh, I hadn't heard of him, but I've heard from him and uh, <coughs> his, his health isn't as poor as some people I could name, neither is mine. So, uh, nice one, Sean. Um, <coughs> he's uh, uh, an inspirational person. Um, he's done some great work, pointing me in the right direction for several entries on this timeline, <coughs> and some th thoughts about um, methodology. My, I heard of my, Austra my Australian contact who says he'll be offline for a bit. He's, he says that basically the internet is driving him nuts. Um, <laughs> I must be nuts because uh, I live online. Have done for decades, well, decades now, yeah. <coughs> uh, <coughs> so that the the it's madness and murder, basically. Uh, the so a scam of so-called mental health issues. I just uh, do a little test here for the the timeline. Um, see how many times I went to that phrase. Oh, only six times. <laughs> only six times. Well, different, different, different phrase here, but uh, <coughs> women, women are accused of, of uh, women are falsely accused men of rape, uh, always said to have mental health issues, and women who murder men are said to have mental health issues. <coughs> um, well, one of the reasons I'm, I'm doing this, um, this one is because of the Magson conviction. Um, <coughs> that wasn't that didn't involve uh, allegations of sexual abuse <coughs> only abuse abuse couple of garden abuse um, <coughs> this is quite outrageous um, in March 2016 Emma Jane Magson stabbed her lover to death <coughs> well she stabbed one, one blow through the heart uh, 11 and a half centimetres if you can imagine that that's, that's deep man that is that is uh, murderous intent um, <coughs> she did it on her doorstep they, I mean, they'd, be, they'd just been fighting on the way home they'd been kicked out of a taxi because she had kicked well she, she kicked him and the taxi driver said get out <coughs> um, she, she stabbed him in the heart um, he was lying in the street and um, his brother lived nearby. Helped. She lied to, 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 to his brother. She lied to a couple of re local residents. <coughs> they took him inside and she delayed phoning uh, Dali 999. Uh, and um, basically, she told him not to hurry. She said she didn't know what happened. <coughs> then, uh, <coughs> uh, oh, well, you can. The. the, the uh, I'll put to the uh, 
the, the call on hill part of it I've, I've uploaded it to um, the archives uh, <coughs> the Leicestershire police released it um, uh, well I think uh, after her con first conviction an ambulance. Ambulance, tell me exactly what's happened. Um, I don't know. My boyfriend's here and he's making weird noises. I don't know what's going on. Right. W what was he doing Good to make... What, what? I don't know. He's got a lot of blood on him. James, look at me, please. James. James, just look at me. Uh, just James, just turn around. Please. I don't know if he's playing around or he's got some up him. James, turn around. James, I've got the ambulance on the phone. Please, just turn around so I know what's up with you. James? But listen, the ambulance is on the phone, so can you please turn around or let me know what's going on? Please, turn around. He's not doing... No, he's not making noises. I don't know. No, he's doing fine. He's just come home. He's come home to me. Yeah. So I've been out all night, and then he's come home to me, and then he's just collapsed on my floor. And then now it was fine about up till five minutes ago and it's just started making noises. Now we stopped and I'm on the phone to you. And is he awake and breathing and Yeah, he's breathing. Okay. Um No, he's breathing fine, it's like he's asleep, but I don't know why he's making the noises. I don't know if he's done it for my sake or for what. Like James. James. What? Now it's just like he's asleep. Right, and to, do you want do you want an ambulance to come and take him to the hospital? I don't know. I don't know if there's some old room or he's just playing me about. <coughs> anyway, she was tried in November 2016 <coughs> and uh, convicted, rightly convicted. Then, surprise, surprise, Harriet Wistrick and Ju Julie Bindle come along and she's a, a oppressed woman. She's... Sex, uh, no, she wasn't sexually abused here. <coughs> uh, there's there's a, a credible article here uh, from um, the Daily Express or the Express on Sunday, June the June. Is it, I'm reading from Newsbank, June the eighth, twenty nineteen. Campaigners champion the cases of two more women who killed after merciless and slow burning abuse. Case studies. <coughs> also, John Twomey. Uh, one of these is Farias and Martin. <coughs> who does allege she was sexually abused by her lover Carl Farrell <coughs> who she stabbed to death incredibly sim similar case actually um, <coughs> she, she stabbed him through the heart and again pleaded uh, somebody somebody else did it <coughs> um, but this this is incredible this is uh, <coughs> this is um, it's un unbelievable Claire Moore, a barrister and member of Justice for Women, said judges and prosecutors needed to review how women were treated by the courts. The number of women given prison sentences is extraordinarily high. No, it's a lot less than men. Uh, and there's no justice in that if you accept most women offend as a result of trauma. And what if you don't, ex what if you don't uh, <coughs> accept that? Hmm? A barrister and member of Justice for Women said Judges and prosecutors needed to review how women were treated by the courts. The number of women given prison sentences is extraordinarily high. No, it's a lot less than men. Uh, and there's no justice in that if you accept most women offend as a result of trauma. And what if you don't, ex what if you don't uh, <coughs> accept that? Hmm? It is absolutely outrageous. Anyway, um, <coughs> these hags got the case back to... Uh, uh, Leicestershire Crown Court again. Coverage of the case was suppressed under Contempt of Court Act 1981 um, until <coughs> until the trial was over, and she was convicted again, albeit by a majority majority verdict after 13 hours of deliberation. Um, it's absolutely outrageous that they're allowed to pull these stunts. Uh, I'm <coughs> doing my best to make sure they can't, but. Um, <coughs> On the similar subject, I I made a video about the a nine minute video or so of the um, Sintoya Brown case. It's called Sintoya Brown and her and Sintoya Brown and her neighbours. If you haven't heard 
of Cintoya Brown. Cintoya is spelled with C Y N T O I A. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> this this case is absolutely outrageous. Uh, she she murdered a man as he slept, shot him in the back of the head, and the lies have been peddled by the mainstream media and the not so mainstream media. It is absolutely outrageous. <coughs> um, a few other things here. Uh, <coughs> Cuomo, <laughs> Governor Cuomo of New York is in the news. Um, he's no one's accused him of rape yet, but <laughs> gives him time. He's been accused of groping women. Um, I don't believe a word of that. The guy's a pig, no doubt about it. Um, one of his young assistants or a young woman close to him um, <coughs> said that uh, she should she, she, be raped, and she told him about about it. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, nah, well, was the guy convicted? What was it? What, what sentence did the guy get? That's the question. If a woman tells you she was raped, ask what sentence the guy got. And if she says, I didn't report it, or uh, he wasn't convicted, run a mile. Run a mile. It's just, I don't know, it's pathetic, these women. People have noticed that the the, the double standard here, with the, 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 way, the outrageous way. Brett Kavanaugh was treated over these bogus allegations, the bogus Blazy Ford allegations, and the other stuff. Uh, absolutely outrageous. <coughs> I mean, Cuomo, it's the consensus appears to be they're using this as a distraction from the <coughs> ten or fifteen thousand people who died in New York nursing homes due to his incompetence. Um, <coughs> Robin Vos, I was going to include her on the timeline, but uh, I've. I've, I've Reviewed the case in some detail, and uh, no, um, <coughs> this was a case dating back to the 80s. Robin Rose, 1984. She was uh, <coughs> 19 at the time, <coughs> and uh, she was stopped up by two police officers in Toronto, um, and she had sex with them. Um, <coughs> And um, she appears to be not be not quite right in the head anyway, um, but um, <coughs> she <coughs> she had sex with these two police officers and then accused them of rape. Um, I, I read up on this case as best I can. There's, <coughs> there's, there's sort of a bit on the regular internet, a bit more on Newsbank. Um, I don't believe she was raped, but I do believe these guys were totally, I mean, <coughs> scumbags. Um, and uh, she ended up committing suicide. <coughs> they were sacked. Um, <coughs> they weren't convicted of rape, but they were sacked. Um, and the guy, this is two police officers who <sighs> basically thrown away their, their careers for a blowjob. Um, Oh, so, 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 so this is this is um, uh, <coughs> Toronto Star, Toronto Star, May tenth, nineteen eighty nine. They, they um, a bit about oral sex. Um, yeah, I mean, <coughs> look, there's a bit of rape trend and false sort of oral sex. I don't, I, I'm. But they abuse their authority anyway, and uh, police officers have been sacked for far, far, far less, um, <coughs> and without just cause, in my humble opinion. So, stay away from drunk women unless you're arresting them, and <coughs> try not to be alone. Always have a female officer present. Um, another case I looked at was that of Keith Span Company. You always hear this: "Oh, survivors don't lie." Well, that they do. <coughs> um, <coughs> this was a case. Um, this dates to 2000, the early well, two, well, it's uh, 2000 and July 2002. It was, it was stupid teens, basically. She claimed to have been raped uh, in California by Keith Spann and two others. And is uh, this is an article from the. Orange County Register of 
May 26, 2004. Gang rape accuser admits lying to police. The young woman who has accused three teenagers of gang rape admitted lying to police about a videotape that depicts her having consensual sex with one of the defendants and denied saying she looked like a porn star on the tape. <coughs> uh, anyway, they were convicted. Um, in spite of her lies. Um, guys, don't do not do this sort of thing. And, and women, don't, don't cheapen yourself with this, you know. Um, I'm not saying you should have to, uh, just a missionary position. <coughs> but don't you know don't go with bunches of guys um <coughs> uh, robin vose was clearly off a trolley the span case I'm talking of madness <laughs> uh this is from the daily mail police launched new probe after this woman claimed she was trafficked to england in the 1980s to be abused by the paedophile star <laughs> <coughs> this is february the 16th i mean seriously um I might talk to the police in line about this actually. Um, <coughs> if you haven't seen my video on on Savile, it's called The Truth About Jimmy Savile. You can find it on um, BitChute. I'm not sure if I've put it on the Internet Archive yet. If I haven't, I will just soon. <coughs> the Truth About Jimmy Savile. Um, basically, it's all lies. Uh, if you more, check out <laughs> more, literally more, more larkin. Uh, it's spelled M O O R and Larkin is L A R K I N. Um, <coughs> he runs a blog called um, Jim Can't Fix This The Death of the Life of Jimmy Savile. And you can still find the work online of the late Suzanne Cameron Blackie. Uh, you'll find them under Anna Raccoon. <coughs> Between them, the two of them did some sterling work on this case. Uh, my, my, I've done my own researches as well and um, you know Savile was weird he was an, ex <coughs> he was a, an exhibitionist a self publicist uh, but he wasn't a child rapist and um, I mean just it's, I mean, it really is amazing um, <coughs> ch ch uh, check out my Centauri Brown video the, the documented lies there and then compare that with Savile and lots of other things not necessarily sexual things but the lies were told all the time um, right now <coughs> this this is um, this bit about survivors not lying uh, if you haven't heard of him Kenneth Bianchi and his cousin Angelo Bono murdered 10 young women and including two underage girls in California they were absolutely I mean absolutely outrageous uh, Bono died in prison in 2002. Bianchi, unfortunately, is still with us. He avoided the death penalty. Um, <coughs> the, these girls were raped, tortured, and murdered. Um, <coughs> but when, when, when the sort of the heat was on, like, they, they were known as the Hillside Strangler initially, although the police suspected there were two, there were two, two men. <coughs> so they became the Hillside Stranglers. Bono sent um, Bianchi out of the state. He said to leave, leave town, but leave the state basically, <coughs> because um, <coughs> he was a bit concerned that his cousin was a bit of a big mouth. Um, Bianchi went up to Washington State, got a job as a security guard, uh, murdered two women in one night, um, and was brought to book immediately because he was a an imbecile as well as a, a sadist. Well, horrible look. <coughs> uh, and he decided he tried to work his ticket by feigning sanity. Uh, he claimed that he, he had a second personality called Steve. Uh, <coughs> and the police didn't buy it, obviously. But some, um, some um, psychiatrists did. And um, one, one who did, it was a documentary, a two-part documentary in, in 1984. And Bianchi seemed to think he might, if he was found insane, he might be able to walk out, walk out of uh, the courtroom. <coughs> or worse, go to a, a soft loony bin. No, no, baby, no. Um, the day before a sanity hearing, 
um, one of the psychiatrists who was taken in changed his mind and I'm going to play you um, a clip of this now it's from, from the 1984 um, two-part documentary this, this is hilarious the night before he was to be cross-examined in Bianchi's sanity hearing, Dr. Ralph Allison, who had left private practice to become a prison psychiatrist, said he had changed his mind about Bianchi. Experience in prison opened his eyes. Well, I quickly learned uh, working here with inmates that I had no reason to believe anything they said. That was a shock to me because I had been used to believing what my patients told me and working from that. but. Here I would meet a man as he's trying to go on parole. And I find out that he's told one story when he got arrested to the police, another story to his own attorney, a third story when he got into court, a fourth story to his parole officer, and a fifth story to me when I got him here. And now he wants to go on parole and he's got a sixth story. And there's no way you know, that you can tell what's the truth when you have that kind of changing history. As I said, hilarious. Um, this is uh, when you hear that uh, seventy percent of women in prison have been sexually abused or ab abused by their partners, or fifty percent, seventy-five percent of women claim asylum or sexual assault survivors. No, 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 no! You can't believe a word these bitches say. <coughs> um, the, 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 as I point out before, they're encouraged. They were encouraged to lie. There's documentation on that. Uh, I haven't published anything all the time on yet, but uh, well, there's, there's a video by an interview with um, um, uh, Ayan Hershali, which doesn't concern sexual allegations, but um, <coughs> there's also something about on the on the timeline about trawling. But you can't you can't believe a word they say. <coughs> um, as I said, real real victims have bruises, not credibility issues. Um, now, <coughs> the, there's a, a big case in Australia. Uh, I don't want to get too, too to give, to give much a way of too much personal detail, but uh, <coughs> this, this goes to um, madness rather than murder. Um, I'll, I'll try to keep this sort of fairly low key. There's, a, there's a, <coughs> an Australian. An Australian position, uh, Australian politician, who is um, how can I put it? I'll, I'll na name him, name him. It's the Attorney General Christian Porter, um, rape allegation. He's been accused of rape, um, and um, there's this article here from the Conversation. <laughs> Academic rigor, journalistic flair. Are you serious, dude? Are you serious? This is an article written by two feminist so called scholars. Um, Emma Serris, senior lecturer in social work and policy studies, University of Sydney, and <coughs> Nicole Moulding, professor of social work and director of Safe Relationships and Communities Research Group, University of South Australia. Are you serious? Uh, <coughs> and. Uh, <coughs> they, they, they declared funding from the Australian Research Council and it's a uh, evidence shows mental illness isn't the reason to doubt women survivors really <coughs> um, uh, this is this is um, <laughs> it's, it's, this is too silly too silly for words um, anyway this woman this is historical in nature. Um, here we are. <coughs> um, he's been he's been accused of rape by this head case, and uh, <coughs> as, as, that was it here. Uh, What's not acceptable is the use of women's struggles with mental health to discredit her account of alleged sexual assault. Well, I'm afraid it is. This is because exposure to trauma is one of the most significant predictors a person will seek support for mental health services. No, no! Gendered violence and mental... No, not gendered violence. No! It isn't gendered violence. 
and uh, mental illness stereotypes. <laughs> Survivors are discredited, blamed, <coughs> blamed, <coughs> labelled mentally ill, hysterical, or vindictive liars. Yeah, I wonder why. Research demonstrates disclosures of violence made by people accessing mental health services are reliable. No. For something actually is marginal. No. Um, this is absolute. Um, how, <coughs> and there's all this garbage about dissociative. Um, dissociation and stuff. There's an idea that people with certain psychiatric diagnoses are more susceptible to false memories of abuse than other groups. There's actually false memory syndrome, and, and, and this is absolutely ludicrous. False, false memories are real. I mean, it's just the, 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 the flim flam here is just unbelievable. And gendered violence, gender this, gender this, gender that. Women with mental health difficulties who disclose violence should be who disclose violence should be just provided with options and resources. How do they disclose it with bruised faces? or just allegations made weeks and months and years later. Right, um, what, what happened was that, um, I'm reading here from the Daily Mail. The woman who struggled with her mental health for years told police about her allegation in February last year, but took her own life in June. Um, this rape is supposed to have happened when she was 16 and he was 17 in 1988. Seriously? What could have happened since then? Um, he denies having sex with her. Uh, you know, um, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely ridiculous. Why, why would a woman come forward and then uh, claim, make the allegation like this decades later? Uh, <coughs> that's the question they usually ask. Why, why would a woman lie about this? Well, why wouldn't she say at the time? Hmm? Maybe she didn't realise she was raped at the time. Maybe maybe this rape only occurred in a tiny mine three decades later. Um, she's clearly a head case. Um, <coughs> I feel sorry for her, but you know she's forty nine when she ended her life, and um, you know a lot of us have been there, including me. And not gone through with it, but uh, let, I just want to talk about men, so called mental illness. Mental illness does not exist, okay? The um, the great Thomas Sars pointed this out. Sars died in 2012. Um, basically, an illness has a pathology. Um, it's called um, an illness, a physical illness is caused by a bacterium, a virus, it can be um, degenerative illness, <coughs> but there's a pathology. If somebody dies from an Ill or with an illness <coughs> for, for a cause, an autopsy, it, it, it will show up. No mental illness, so called, has any pathology. Um, it, it's basically the, the behaviours and beliefs, so-called mental illnesses. Um, when, when the organic cause for a so-called mental illness is discovered, that <coughs> that mental illness is removed from the list of mental illnesses and reclassified as a neurological illness. SARS used to give the, the example of um, a form of um, syphilis, but. Let, let me let me say Parkinson's disease, for example. Um, if if you if you see someone with Parkinson's, the late great Muhammad Ali had Parkinson's. Uh, Michael J. Fox has it. If if somebody's look, if a guy's moving his head like that or something keep, keep, keeps moving, and you're told this he has um, Parkinson's, you don't think this person was mentally ill, right? Um, you know it's you, you may not understand the intricacies of it. The intricacies is that we know that wiring going wrong with the brain. Um, <coughs> mental illness is an industry. Um, the United States Census of 1840 listed uh, idiocy and insanity uh, in its categories. In 1980s, this was, this was replaced by dementia, dipsomania, epilepsy, mania, melancholia, monomania, and paresis. 
um, <coughs> you'll be familiar with dementia. Dementia is, you can call it a mental illness, but it's, it's actually brain deteriorating. Uh, dipsomania is too much of this, you know, drinking. Epilepsy isn't a mental illness, it's a, it's sort of the wiring of the brain. <coughs> Mania is, the opposite of mania is depression. Um, or, or in this list, melancholia. And this is, it's a behaviour. Well, behaviours are caused by all sorts of things. Um, you know, if you, if you put 20 people in, in a crowded elevator for, stuck for 12 or 14 hours, you shouldn't be surprised if arguments break out. Um, people who come into money tend to be happy. Um, all sorts of stuff. Um, but, you know, even <coughs> some people can be extremely wealthy. They have everything, everything going for them and still be unhappy. I mean, George Michael, what a sad case he was. He had everything. I mean, he had enormous talent. He wrote his greatest song at the age of 17. He was wealthy beyond the dreams of Avalis. Avarice, he had women chasing him all over the place. And he decides he becomes queer, or he was queer. And he was unhappy, he was oh, tortured by his sexuality, tortured by this, that, and the other. And he's dead at, what, 55? <coughs> and, yeah, he found life hard. A lot of people find life hard. Um, and this is this is what so-called mental illness is about. Um, 1952 was the, the, diagnostic, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders was published. That was DSM-1. It was about that thick. I've, seen, I've, I've, I've gone through it. And it contained 106 categories of so-called mental illness. Uh, the second edition was published in 1968. And this expanded to 134 pages. Um, <coughs> it listed such things as anxiety neurosis, hysterical neurosis, phobic neurosis, um, alcoholism. Alcoholism isn't an you know, <coughs> Alcoholism is caused by, it's, it's, it's a description of a behaviour, it's too much drinking. Uh, by 1987, um, 1987 was the, the third edition of the DSM and it expanded to 567 pages, if you can believe that. Uh, including factitious disorders. Um, there's one called uh, trichotillomania, failure to resist impulses to put out one's own hair. The fifth edition was published in May 2013. It was nearly a thousand pages and head of publication, one critic, published the article, has the manual gone mental? Um, <coughs> where, where do all these so-called mental illnesses come from? Well, they're voted into existence. I mean, there are people who are doubtful about the the uh, the COVID virus, uh, COVID-19, but really believe it's a, <coughs> I mean, there's obviously something there. You know, whether or not you believe it's a new virus, there's, some, there's something there. It, isn't, it wasn't voted into existence. Yeah, you know, people are dying from some tangible infection. Mental illnesses, so called, are voted into existence. And as SARS pointed this out, and a lot of them are manufactured by the, the profession. And some of it is a cultural thing. In 1851, the physician, the American physician Samuel Cartwright, came up with drapetomania. This was the mental affliction that made slaves want to escape. <laughs> Seriously. Um, <clears throat> as Sars wrote in his book, um, The Manufacture of Madness, in 1970 homosexuality was an illness so dangerous to the commonweal that the US Immigration and Naturalization Service was charged with excluding homosexuals from entering the country. Today, homosexuality is a normal lifestyle, disapproving it is a mental illness called homophobia. Guilty! <laughs> I, I say, look, look, cultural things. Um, if a guy's walking around in India wearing a loincloth, talking to himself, um, you know, nobody would think anything of it. 
uh, you jump in Britain, in Britain or America, you're liable to end up in a room of rubber rules. Um, <coughs> dress codes and stuff, you know, all the hysteria we've had over we've had over the hijab, um, the way the way people dress. I mean, there's a lot of hysteria. Uh, uh, you know, this this trans nonsense, um, dressing boys in pink and that, but. You know, I mean, Roman tunics are like skirts. Uh, a, a Scotsman's kilt is, you know, virtually a skirt, isn't it? Um, <coughs> if I were to walk up down the high street wearing a skirt tomorrow, um, <laughs> so I mean, mental illness exists. Human weakness exists, and a lot of these, a lot of these women who claim to be mentally ill, it, it's basically an excuse. Um, one, one of my favourites, I've mentioned this before, is of uh, a low life named Ru Ruin Jutting. Um, <coughs> um, this was a guy, uh, it was a banker in Hong Kong, and on separate occasions he lured prostitutes uh, to, to his apartment tortured them to death and at his trial um, <laughs> the defence produced a so-called expert witness a psychiatrist who claimed he was suffering from one of the things he was suffering from was sexual sadism disorder <laughs> which is it isn't a, there's no such illness as sexual sadism disorder it's a description of a behaviour of um, it's somebody who likes torturing people to death that's, lud that's absolutely ludicrous uh, to suggest this is mentally ill Men this is mentally ill the guy who's mentally ill this is a mental illness um, uh, similar to um, SARS is Peter Breggin uh, Breggin is still alive he's 84 now I actually met him in um, in um, the 1990s, he's, the UK launch of his book Toxic Psychiatry uh, was uh, at a Libertarian Alliance in, meeting in London. Uh, I remember that because he, he nearly came to blows with Professor Anthony Flew, which was... <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, I remember speaking to him, he said, he said to me that um, if a guy wanted to stand in the middle of the road naked direction of traffic, that was okay with him. But if he wanted to come along to his surgery and discuss it, you know, why, why he has the urge to do that, that too. Um, a lot, you know, as I said myself, um, <coughs> life is uh, life is a marathon. Well, yeah, if you get to my age, it's a marathon. <coughs> Hopefully, I live quite a bit longer, but I doubt, doubt it. Um, but for some people, it's they can't, you know, <coughs> they can't make it. Um, if could you run a marathon? I couldn't run a marathon. I, I probably never could. But uh, if I if I try running a marathon, it killed me. Lots of people my age, if they try running a marathon, it would kill them. Um, uh, a few years ago, about. 20, 2016 I think um, of, the, of the people who entered the London Marathon 7% of runners couldn't complete it that's yes uh, you know so 93% 90, could <coughs> but if you can't complete the marathon does that mean you're suffering from marathonitis no obviously not um, and some people they just find life difficult and I think this is where a lot of malingering comes in um, and women who say women who make false rape allegations and do all sorts of other things this is this is the madness of women I know I said mental illness exists but this is the madness of women um, <coughs> you know men become serial killers and, and murderers and stuff and um, women generally speaking don't they find other ways to express their madness. Um, 
better ways, well, safer ways. Because if you want to destroy a man, you can stab him, you know, <coughs> beat him to an inch of his life. But if you do that, you know, you might get away with it once or twice, but people who do that sort of thing, uh, we call them psychopaths, but uh, people who do that sort of thing usually end up destroying their own lives. Um, whereas a woman could destroy a man simply by making a, a false allegation. After all, why would she lie? <coughs> um, and if it's post dated sufficiently, doesn't doesn't have to be any physical evidence. So um, I've covered a lot of ground there. Let, let, me, let me talk about a few cases of of. Um, women who um, murder men and then claim to have been raped or victims of attempted rape there's a few quite a few of these on, on the timeline um, what I haven't put on the timeline is uh, Barbara Coombs this is a woman who murdered her father oh yes here we are <coughs> how many to how, how, how nearly this is the timeline yet uh, Barbara Coons in 2000, January 2006 uh, she, she was living with her father at Stockport and uh, it was, she's, she's no young she's no spring chicken so he was, he was over 80 uh, she murdered him in, in January 20, 2006 and buried him in the back garden <coughs> and can, continued to claim his pension and carer's allowance uh, totaling £180,000 over a 12 year period uh, and one day she walked into a police station and admitted murdering him. Um, <coughs> I, I spoke to the lead officer on the case. He was very um, through, through the Manchester Police Press Office, Greater Manchester Police Press Office. Uh, but uh, he, he was, you yeah, know, he didn't want to say too much. The British police tend to be like that a lot of the time. Um, and it, well. It was claimed that this guy, that all sorts of allegations were made against him. That uh, he was only seven years old, you know, and not in the best of health. <coughs> and I, I think, I think probably that, you know, she she moved, she, I think she be, she'd been married and, and had a daughter or something. She moved back to live with him, uh, and she probably probably just lost it with him because old people can be crotchety. Old people can be crotchety. And, um, she, and um, <coughs> when it came to court, um, it, was, it claimed that, the claim was made that she'd been sexually abused by him over a period of years. So it was absolute garbage. You know. um, there's a, on the timeline. There's a case of a woman named McCandless. Uh, this was just down the road from me. Uh, Theresa McCandless, yeah. Uh, <coughs> she was convicted of manslaughter on June 5th, 1987. This was uh, an allegation of attempted rape. Uh, <coughs> she was um, she was a young, fairly young, um, but um, says 30 in this press report. So she's 29 or 30. She she met went with a bloke called Harold Bolton who was nearly twice her age. Uh, they both I think they both had problems with they both had problems with drink. And she stabbed him to death at his Cat Catford apartment. I was in I was in Catford earlier this week actually. Um Wednesday. Um was it Tuesday? <coughs> I was I was in, <coughs> in Catford earlier this week. And uh she 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 cried. She claimed attempted rape. She got off with um, what she get? She actually got four years for stabbing this guy to death. There's another case in America. I haven't looked into yet. I'll probably be adding that to the timeline. A young woman named Ezra McCandless, uh, who shot her lover, and she she cried attempted rape, <coughs> and. Uh, 
is um, the jury didn't buy it and she's um, now serving a very heavy very heavy sentence uh, it's quite a few quite a few of the time like that like this one of the worst is uh, Patricia Esparza yeah Patricia Esparza Norma Patricia Esparza had a bit difficult bit of difficulty finding that because her name wasn't actually on the timeline it's, it's in the, in, I'll have to I'll have to put it on uh, it's, it's just in the side file uh, Norma Patricia Sparza yeah uh, she she had sex with a guy named in, in 1995 she, she had sex with a guy called Gonzalo Ramirez and um, she was afraid she'd become pregnant um, so she claimed to be raped this was in California, <coughs> so she recruited a posse uh, of white knights, they kidnapped this guy, tortured him, killed him, um, and she got on with her life, uh, and she became a, an academic, uh, she was a professor of um, she was quite an accomplished academic anyway. <coughs> um, prof professor of psychology in Europe. Uh, but at the time she was a 20 year old student. And, and uh, she was afraid she'd become pregnant. Um, the White Knight and got, uh, there were se several of them. Um, G G Gianni Van got life without parole. Uh, another person committed suicide to stand up with the police um, she had sex behind her boyfriend's back basically and um, <coughs> she's just treated like a victim <laughs> she's treated like a victim I've got a, a clip on the timeline I might play it uh, or part of it um, and, and that's what's your take on her and her credibility since you got you're one of the few people that got a chance to interview her. I, I feel really you know I was I think I was the only person that got to interview her of any media here that didn't do it in a press conference setting so I had a good hour and a half with her um, she has a very compelling story um, she's you know she's obviously conscious of how to manipulate the media too you know she brought her daughter along uh, the prosecutor pointed out that the daughter was at the press conference. The daughter was with her when I talked to her. Um, she's got a great social media campaign going. It's like nothing I've ever seen. In fact, it's that part of the case fascinates me that you know, there's a Twitter account devoted to this. There's a Facebook account devoted to it. She was able to uh, write a piece and have it published on the Huffington Post the day after she was uh, put into the Orange County Jail. And there's a, there's a movement among you know, professors and smart people like the Occidental and probably in France and Europe to you know, actively s seek uh, the dropping of charges in this case through a change.org petition, through all these other means. So the, the case on that level, the, the, the intellectual sort of we're going to use social media, we're going to use petitions, we're going to use you know, a groundswell of support for this woman who is a victim. Uh, of rape to you know somehow change the outcome of this really horrific criminal case and it is horrific too by the way the victim uh, was you know killed with a meat cleaver and a, a good chunk of his head was torn off with this and meat part of his cleaver. arm was also yeah. dangling and, and, and prior well. to that he had been kidnapped taken to some kind of a warehouse he was beaten there it was there that in fact Patricia Esparza also went into the room and saw him having been beat to a bloody pulp before he was taken out to that highway and stabbed to death so it's a it, it is a very um, horrific crime yeah, she didn't plead mental health issues. Let's have, let's have a look at some of these men, so-called mental health issues, anyway. Right, so uh, here's one here. Uh, first one, <coughs> the April 1998. Uh, Christine Ferguson uh, is in um, Ascombe Grange Prison. Claims to have been raped by a prison officer. Um, it turned out that... Um, what she claimed happened was physically impossible and um, she, she put a trial but uh, it was abandoned the trial was abandoned because of her mental health issues <coughs> uh, October 2009 
Melissa Handy um, she was set for trial at Plymouth Crown Court but again she was, uh, the case was stayed because of mental health issues um, Steve Rudderham was um, uh, this, this, is guy, this is a guy who, oh no it's a guy who was uh, falsely accused of being a paedophile he yeah, ended up committing suicide um, Uh, September 15th, 2014, a student has to be raped on campus. Uh, she's in Lubbock, Texas. And uh, no, she's, she wasn't raped, but she needs help because of her mental health issues. Um, uh, just one, one more. Uh, a dude is dragged to a park at Canterbury and raped by two black sexual predators on December 22nd, 2017. Um, two, black, two blacks in Canterbury. Not, I've been to Canterbury. Oh, well, I've certainly been, I was, in, I was down that way a while back. Um, anyway, there was uh, these, these uh, black sexual predators. Uh, they, appear to, they appear to be either imaginary or innocent. Um, it didn't happen anyway. Uh, this is another guy. This is another. This is a guy with it's understood the, the informant may have suffered mental health issues. <coughs> so men can do this as well. Um, it, it's basically a cop out. Mental illness, so called, is a cop out. Um, and nobody who it should not be used should not it should not unless somebody's really far gone let's say on a, literally on a different planet um with some sort of diseased brain um they shouldn't be allowed to play these sort of gambits um as i said life is um life is hard and people react to it in different ways but we all have agency you know we all got some agency um, there are things things we know we shouldn't do um, now sometimes you get into a situation where you you're going to do something bad but um, really uh, murder and you know, murder coupled with false allegations or false allegations followed by murder or whatever isn't on anyway that's uh that's how number 50 i will uh might take a little while to assemble this um <coughs> anyone has any um any cases or anything to send me comments uh donations <laughs> uh you know where i am um i've added a few cases to the timeline recently I've, I've, I've been doing other things as well um, but I'll try to add a few more over the next couple of weeks and uh, I've got some, some, some recent ones um, I'm trying to get some more from um, non uh, Anglophone, Anglophone countries I just just found one from um, well I, I mean I'll keep looking but uh, I've got um, <coughs> It's well over five thousand entries to the timeline. Uh, check out check out the, the, the videos as well. Um, you'll find all the information on the timeline and on the uh, in the bibliography of my uh, main website, and increasingly on IMDb. So um, anyway, that's um, that's hangout number fifty.